I've always been attracted to native flowers. As a child, I loved picking blueberries, bringing them home to my mom, and she'd make a blueberry pie. I can remember coming home with uh, pink lady slippers. And my mother said, oh, Paul, they're so beautiful, but they're not supposed to be picked. They're so rare. And I felt, oh my god, I did something wrong. <laughs> I think today what we're going to do is we'll do a cube. We'll do, I'll do roses. Dave, maybe you could do some blueberries. Right. Beautiful job with the blueberries. Thanks. It's, it, and, and we'll have blueberries, gooseberries. What's the name of that book? Oh, American Burying Beetles. All right, we're going to have blueberries, gooseberries, American Burying Beetles. Yeah. We'll have a, a honey, a honey bee. Uh, maybe we'll have right. it swarming. What I'll do is two or three Pineland pickleweeds. And I'll do it in yellow. What I enjoy is taking color glasses and overlaying, mixing, adding all sorts of visual detail to the material so that when I sculpt it out into a blossom, there's a lot of complexity. I love making I love the idea that uh, I've mastered skills that allow me to manipulate a material into an object. And I'm going to make a flower now that's uh, kind of interesting. I build the flower from the center, the center out. I'm adding stamens on a pistol. And then I'll add the anther. To me, glass is magical. I have color, I have translucence, I can work it and shape it. And I love the idea of knowing when I pick up a glass rod, I know that glass has the memory of the best work from the past. I love how mysterious it is. Why don't you lay it right on the plate? Right there. Perfect. All right, take, all right. It's interesting how the work is a combination of, of components and steps. And we start off very basic and just building blocks. Add, keep adding, adding. You did a beautiful job on that, Kathy. I think we can, uh, Capture it on the flower? Looks good. I think it looks really good. Oh, right hold good. it. I think that's, that's perfect. Good. Great. Yeah. You know, a little, uh, a little spontaneity. It worked. All right, let me seal it on the blossom. I'm the second oldest of nine children. Nice Irish Catholic family. My dad was a chemist. I was a poor student. I went through school as an undiagnosed dyslexic. I actually graduated at the bottom of my class. I can remember coming home from Pittman High School and I had a brochure from Salem Community College and they were offering scientific glass ball. So I can remember at the dinner table, I handed him the brochure, he opened it up, he said, glass blowing? You want to be a glass blower? They, that's a fascinating trade. So he got so excited about glass blowing, he took me to Salem and I saw the kids standing in front of torches, bending tubing, and I thought, wow, that's, that looks fascinating. I sensed as a student that the South Jersey glass tradition was pretty big, and it was pretty important. Everybody seemed to have a great uncle or a grandfather or a great grandfather that was a glass blower. I really sensed as a student that I was embarking on something kind of exciting. Are you ready? Yeah, you're fine. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at the honeybee in relationship to the beetle. 
Unbelievable. All right. Let's... Glass is a mysterious material. And the idea that I'm suspending a design in the center of crystal is wonderfully challenging. OK, Dave, whenever you're ready, heat it up. All right. When I first started making paperweights, I quickly decided I was going to focus on the nature of my childhood. Beautiful, beautiful. I can remember getting all excited because I made a, a blue columbine. It was a little stylized, but it was a blue columbine. And I put a root system on the stem. I thought, wow, I got a root system. <laughs> and I can remember getting all excited about my root system. From the root system came buds and, you know, on and on and on. In an abstract way, I think of my work as referencing sex, death, and God. And to me, that means spirituality. That means the life cycle of nature. The Benedictine monks have a beautiful motto, to labor is to pray. I have loved the idea of making my labor my prayer. When I'm sitting at my torch, I'm making petals, making stamens, by making it a mantra. There's a spiritual dimension to my work. It's very personal. I think we all have needs, and I think it's a blessing to, to integrate your needs to what you're doing. As a kid, not being able to read, failing school, just having struggles, just a constant struggle. Ready? This has defined my sense of self-worth. 